Hey guys, let's talk about the big O. In computer science, we use a big O to determine the efficiency of algorithms. We needed to see how fast our functions will scale and affect performance. We care about time and space. Basically, how long it will take to go through all the instructions and how much memory we allocate during runtime. I will go through some code examples and show how to get the big O for each. Let's start with time complexity. In this function, I will pass an array and print the first element of my array. We could have 10 or 1,000 elements in my array, but we're just printing the first element. This is just one instruction. This will give me a complexity of O1. That means I can have as many number of elements as I want, but my number of steps did not change. This is a really good case for the big O. In this function, I'm going to pass an array, and I'm going to iterate n number of times, and as I iterate, print each element. If we have 1,000 elements, then we're going to iterate 1,000 times and print 1,000 elements. This will give us a complexity of O n. If our number of elements increases, our number of steps will increase as well. In this function, we pass an array, and then we loop through the array n number of times, and then again n number of times. This is a nested loop, which means if I have 1,000 elements in my array, I'm going to run this one line of code a million times. This will make our instructions or steps increase exponentially as our input increases, giving us a complexity of O n squared where our number of steps increase exponentially as our number of elements increase. This is actually a really bad case of the big O. In this function, we pass an array, then we iterate n number of times in this loop and n number of times in this loop. It's one right after the other, so in reality we're doing n times plus n times. This will give us O to n, but in the big O, we can drop the constant since it does not contribute to the growth of our runtime. So we can have O n, like our last example. So that's pretty good. In this function, I'm going to pass an array, then I have a nested loop, which is our n squared. Then I have another loop where I iterate n number of times plus n. Then I print one element of my array, 1. This will give me an O of n squared plus n plus 1. Again, we can drop the n and 1 since they do not contribute to the growth of the runtime giving us O n squared. Now let's talk about space complexity. Here we care about optimizing for less memory. In this function, we take a number, then we loop n times, and we'll run whatever n times we pass. The space complexity here, though, is O 1. And that's because we are not allocating a new variable. In this function, we take a number, then we create an array the size of our input, and we loop n number of times. As we loop, we're going to save the number 1 in each of our elements. This will give us the space complexity of O n, because our array will scale based on our input when we run it. Okay, this is it. I hope you enjoyed the video. My next video will be on the big O and logarithms. Until the next video, subscribe and comment.